Hi, I'm Dave Cross. Welcome to another in our series of green screen photography using gear from Westcott and the FX Home software. Today we're going to be doing an interesting project. We're going to put the same person in the same photo twice in two different outfits, which is going to be interesting. It takes a lot of pre-planning, which we'll talk about in a second. But first of all, let's talk a little bit about our setup. Now we do have a separate video just on the basics of setting up your green screen and lights, which you can watch separately. But kind of in summary here, there's a couple things we're worried about. The first one is making sure our green screen is nice and smooth so we don't get any wrinkles and we have a nice clean background. And the second one is our lighting. We've got our lighting set up to make sure our subject is properly lit, but we're not casting a shadow on the background because the hardest thing to do is to deal with shadows. Now in this project, we have this idea of having Zan here is gonna be both the mild mannered uh, secretary or whatever she is and an arch villain kind of interacting with each other but that means we have to kind of plan out our shoot so we do all the shots in this outfit first then we'll take a break she'll change do makeup and everything else and we'll do a second series of images so what she's gonna have to do is play a bit of an actress and, and interact as if there's someone there but one of the things that we're gonna try to do here is to make our life simpler Every so often, if she, for example, has to react or throw a punch, we're gonna use something as a reference. So later on in the shoot, we still have this as a height for the second photograph. So that's the kind of thing, kind of thing you make your life a lot easier when you start to put the two shots together. Now today, to make my life a little easier during the shooting, I'm using an app from On One called DSLR Remote. And what that allows me to do is during this setup, I can fire the camera remotely. So my camera is tethered to my laptop and the software using either your iPhone or an iPad to take a shot. So if I fire the shot, what it does is then it shows up here on my phone so I can look at the image and kind of see if the lighting looks good, change camera settings. And once I have it set up from this end, then I'll go back to the camera and take some shots. So I think we got our setup looking pretty good. You ready? All right, so let's go take some shots. Okay, hold on one second. Now one of the advantages of shooting tethered is we can get instant feedback. So in order to make sure this is all working, I can really quickly switch over to the software, to Photo Key, and add one of these images I've just taken just to make sure it's actually working the way we want it to. Looks great, so now we can continue. So that's a real advantage of tethered shooting is you get that instant feedback. All right, so let's have you do a few where you're gonna interact with yourself, so kind of cowering in fear of the one beside you, very nice. Okay, now the opposite. Now you're gonna throw a punch at her, and when you throw the punch, I'm gonna get you to hold it. So once you've swung, hold that pose, if you would. Ready? Okay, hold that. Do one again, this time hold your pose. Okay, Stephanie, could you bring in the light stand? Okay, do it one more time. We need to actually keep it in the same position. So one more time, there you go, now keep it there. Now what we're doing is having Stephanie measure kind of the height, because later on we wanna make sure the reaction makes sense to the, the villain. So this way you're kind of good to go. Okay, so let's just do a few more. You can just do other poses of a similar kind of a nature. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna take a few more shots here, but all along this theme, and anytime we do anything with height, we're using that light stand to help us. So we're gonna do a few more shots here, then she'll change into our other outfit, and we'll come back and do the other half of the shoot. All right, now we're ready for part two. Zan is back, and she's all dressed in her arch villain kind of outfit. So we're gonna do some more shots with her always making sure there's some interaction happening. So we're gonna give her some directions, but for the most part, she's gonna play and we're gonna try different shots from this angle. All right, so let's just do a couple of quick ones to make sure. Okay, so just like your, there you go. <laughs> now, Stephanie, if you can bring in that pole. Remember earlier we had the post here to kind of, as a frame of reference as the punch. So that just gives you a rough idea of kind of how you want to react. So you want to be as if you're reacting to, to being hit. So let's, that looks pretty good. Nice. Do another one like that. All right, so we're just going to do a few more shots, but then we're going to go into the software and put these two halves together. Well, you saw during our photo shoot how we had to plan things out and shoot all the photos with one outfit and then later on in a second outfit and here's how we pull it together. So I've created a new project in Photo Key. I'm gonna make it an eight by 10 at 200 DPI. For my color printer that works quite nicely. Of course, you can choose whatever resolution you need for whatever your end result is. And let's go ahead and import now our foreground image. We need to find 
the one I want is one of the ones where she was throwing a punch. So I find somewhere, I think. I, think I like that one right there. So that's the one I'm gonna use right here. So we'll bring that in and we'll position her to fit. I'm just gonna take a guess and say 50%. That's actually not a bad guess at all. Let's make it just a hair smaller, maybe 48. Now before we do anything else, let's take a quick look at the alpha to see what it looks like. Looks like we need to just do just a little bit of work of maybe clipping the foreground just a bit to get the middle of her outfit. Now you'll see up at the top here, the angle I shot this, we're still seeing a little bit up at the top. So one of the advantages we can do is add a mask. And masks are pretty easy to do. You just click the add mask button and then just as if you're drawing a shape. We're just going to say we want this part up here not to be visible and that will just hide that for us. Just like that. Okay, I think for now I'm going to put her just a little over to the side. Now every so often you'll notice that there's just a little bit of green reflection here and there. One of the ways we can deal with that is by going to the filters and just changing the color temperature or the color balance a little bit sometimes that can just be enough just a little tweak to make it look a little bit more realistic now in this case to be able to give me the full amount of control that I want I'm gonna export this one image just as it is as a separate file and it will export as a PNG with the transparency so that I can use it later on now we'll go back here and I'm actually going to change my foreground to one of her as the villain when she's reacting. So I just need to find one of Remember in the video you saw we were using that light stand kind of as a reference for her. I think I like that one. Hmm, which one? I think I'm going to go with this one. So I open that and we're going to go to the position. It's nicely already in the right kind of scale pretty good. Let's take a quick look at the alpha. Also looks pretty good. And we're going to add a mask to this one because we also want to get rid of the light stand that was just there for us as kind of that reference. Okay, looks pretty good. Now, remember we exported the one of the punch as a PNG. Here's why, because now I can add a layer and to that layer, add the one of her punching. Now I can decide if I want there to be more overlap, if I go back to the position, we're still on the foreground, which is the villain, but because this is the overlay, that's how we're able to kind of get her in front like that. Now we also want to have an actual background image, so I have a couple of backgrounds. Uh, one is this is a stock image, which just has this kind of cartoony look that I kind of liked and I also created my own in Photoshop just to kind of give me something else. You could do this in any graphic software, just give us more of a bright kind of a cartoon look. And I think I might scale the background up just a little bit so it fills up the remainder of our image, something like that. And we're gonna add one other thing, an overlay, which is another stock image I found. And I just turned it into a PNG to have no background. So let's scale it down a little bit and we could also maybe rotate it a bit if we want it to be a little more dramatic, something like that, still a little big. Get that kind of cartoon look going on. So for this project, a big part of it, as you saw in our live section, was thinking ahead to kind of think, okay, I want her to throw a punch, I want her to react, all that kind of stuff will add to this kind of, shall we call it, believability, so that the two characters look like they're really interacting. And because we did a series of different images, you could almost put together a comic strip with different key images and add to it and create your own kind of comic strip very easily using our gear from Westcott and the Photo Key software.